Just because we post really cute photos on Insta doesn't mean we're actually happy. We're dead inside. Welcome back to She Has a Point with Kylie Donovan and Francesca Coburn. You are listening to episode seven. In today's episode, we are going to sort of do a six-month update since it has been six months since we've kind of both moved to our respective countries. And in our initial talkings, in, there was a lot of like, this is what's so great. This is what's so great. But maybe because it's winter and it's very gray out. But we also kind of wanted to discuss some of the downsides of this lifestyle. Yeah. Um, and some of the things that, you know, we look at other people's lives who are maybe stayed in our hometown and maybe ha- are married. And we say, you know what? you seem to have this figured out. You seem to maybe go to bed with a few less tears in your eyes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, they actually get to go to bed because they're not trying to write an essay at two o'clock yeah. in the morning. Yeah. Or a lesson prep <laughs> right before class. Um, yeah, I think the big thing we were, like the overarching theme of the negatives was loneliness yeah um so yeah we've both been six months so Kylie's in Glasgow in Scotland and I'm in Hangzhou China which is just a couple hours outside of Shanghai and both big moves for us uh both moved off off our different continents to do this and let's let's okay let's start with the positives because there are lots of positives I can see in my situation I mean Kylie, do you want to start with your positives? Um, so obviously I study law and I think a lot of times people go into it and you have people who love it or they hate it. And I will say the content of my education, I'm really enjoying. Like I'm really enjoying yeah. studying law. I think it's totally worthwhile. And I I think it was the right path for me. I think it is the right path for me. Yes. Do I think I yes. maybe should have done it two years ago rather than our useless master's? Maybe. maybe but I wouldn't have met you um regardless um no I think talker. like yeah I think law was the right thing to do yeah. and I think it's good that I am getting to experience another culture especially mm-hmm. a culture that you know was the hegemon and it's just like kind of um a declining hegemon or a declined hegemon yeah it's just like interesting to see though it makes me like kind of understand the world in a different way I think it does. I think living in different cultures really actually gives you a perspective. I mean, that's one of the reasons I moved to China. Um, for those who don't know, uh, my area of study is China and China's rise and just kind of China acting as potentially a regional hegemon and et cetera. So I came here to learn the language, uh, mix money and, you know, try and see a perspective from China, China's eyes and Chinese people's eyes, because I think it's kind of imperialist to try and impose ideals or impose an agenda or outlook on a country having never stepped foot inside it um it'd be or and something so vastly different from my own culture I'm very ignorant um but yeah I do think you're a law girly because you're very studious and law really takes a lot of studying and really like knowing the detail I feel like in social sciences and I'm going to say this because I study social sciences so I can say this you can kind of like lie your way through it and I hate to use this word bullshit your way through it because you don't really need to know exact unless you're quoting like figures Mm -hmm. but and they change all the time but law statutes are statutes case law is case law and if you don't know it I'm sorry that's a d in your exam that's quite honestly how it works yeah yeah I'm, yeah, and I did quite well on my mock trial, I think. I mean, were my legs like, shaking the whole time? But I think I did a good job. Um, and that just felt like, you know, an affirmation. Confirmation. Yeah, a confirmation of that you're doing the right thing. No, I think yeah. it really suits you. And I think you'll make a great lawyer um, later on in life. Um, <laughs> if I ever get there. <laughs> you will, you will. I think it's hard in the moment, again, it's a six month hump of like, what am I doing with my life? As you said, you look to other people who've taken different paths 
and you kind of go god they seem to have figured it out they've got they've got a, they've got a job or they're they've moved on to the phd or they're they've got a happy family or partner or they've made other achievements like they've moved out to their own flat or something silly like that and you know they're going to the gym <laughs> on a weekly basis rather than me sneaking in you know once every month to show my face but is that whole thing of it's easy to get really depressed in a comparative game, but I do think there are some drawbacks. So of course I'm here in China to teach English. Um, it's also sort of paired with the fact that I wanted to learn Chinese and learning a language in the country of origin is the best way to do it because you're forced to learn, especially in China. Pretty much nobody speaks English, especially in this city. Uh, funnily enough. Um, so I'm really forced to learn the basics at least, which is good. You know, that's it's, it would be a very ignorant to walk through life only speaking one language. But I'm also here to make money, uh, because lost cost of living here is really low. And as foreign teachers, foreign experts were paid quite well. Uh so that's quite nice. Uh, so I can save a lot of money, pay back the student loan, start saving for the PhD if anyone ever accepts me. Um, so that's kind of like what I'm here and what I'm doing. So Kelly, can you tell me about the high points of Glasgow and like what you're really enjoying, have enjoyed about Glasgow? Um, see, I'm at this like very, like, I would say probably two months ago, I could have answered this with a lot of enthusiasm right now. Of mm. course, I'm at a different place. Um, I will say I really like the layout of the city. Mm. Um, I love having a subway. I love living in the center of the city. Um, and the university is beautiful. I actually think that University of Glasgow like isn't terrible, right? Like of the university if I've been at, I actually think it's probably the best. Like most yeah. engaged staff with the students, maybe. Mm. I don't know. That's good. Um, yeah. I think those are probably my favorite things. And I also love my internship. Um, like I like the people there. I'm doing, let's say, pro bono work, kind of. And I think that's like super worthwhile, worth mm. my time. I know everything about Scottish benefits now. <laughs> um, it's actually so insane. You, so you need benefits, Kylie's your girl. Uh yeah. Yeah. Um, what about you? What about like Hangzhou and like well we can talk about like a couple things with you um one being the difference in climate and two just like the experience of being a teacher like spending time with kids yeah. I must admit when I first got here and thankfully hopefully no one in my employment listens to this I did have a massive slump after the first month I really struggled in my second month I felt so like I'm not cut out to be a teacher and then I started like really putting in effort, like actually like, okay, I'm going to, it sounds funny, but the big thing for me is making my own materials because then I knew what was coming on the next slide because I had made it and I really like put more effort into my lesson plans and that really helps. And I consulted with people who taught for 20 years, you know, and that's something they did help. So I kind of got the knack of it. I'm realizing that I'm not cut out to be probably a grade one and grade two teacher for life. That's the years I teach. I probably want to teach older. So maybe grade uh, four, five, six. But I can always ask for that next year and see if they'll say yes. But I think I'm handling it much better. And like coming back this term, I felt a lot stronger. I mean, it hasn't stopped me yelling at the kids because, you know, kids are kids. Uh, but I have felt like much more in control. And it's just having more, like more in your portfolio to be able to use like games. Like you really need loads of games in English teaching because the kids don't just say the words once when they repeat it after you. They suddenly say it 50 times because they're having fun playing a game. So it's like learning that mentality. In the other sense of like living here, the good things are like the food. You can just get food for like, I had dumplings in the day. What did I pay? Like 16 kwai, which is like two pounds for 12 dumplings. It was so good. And it was really like that. The food around is so cheap. It's like, like, we can blame when it's 100 quai. That's like 10 pounds. That's the cost of like the lowest cost of a meal out in Scotland. What is extortion in Scotland? No, I don't cost even think that you can get anything for 10 pounds anymore. Yeah, cost of, li yeah, cost of living thing aside. 
everything so fast. Like I can order stuff online. It'll be here like the next day. Um, like actually, I now have an e-bike. Uh, I said I would never get on one. I now have one. She's she's changing. Um, but I have been hit by a car already. So like, the thing is, here people get hit by cars often. I hit. <laughs> I got hit by a car. <laughs> I just. I was like, fuck, it's a pretty expensive car. So I just like whipped my mask off. And I was like, what do you think you're doing? <laughs> They're like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I was like, yes, next time, look before you turn in on me. Because I was like, I don't want to pay for this car. And they're not yeah. going to like come for me, hopefully, when they see I'm a Vigo Ren, which is just foreigner. They'll just be like, oh, that was weird. That foreigner like hit us with her e-bike. They did hit me, I want to clarify. Um, but yeah, like, being able to zip around like on these roads is really cool and yeah being paid quite nicely to live a life and like I can go and get my nails done I've never had that before like I have yoga classes which I have to thank a fellow teacher for she gave me her card which is 50 classes still on Wait. Like, oh yeah you, you yeah you did tell me this you told me this yeah. yeah so there's stuff like that and I can travel like I went to Thailand and Singapore and it was so cheap because it's so close like so cheap as in like comparatively it'd be a thousand pounds to get here yeah and I just have the money to spend you know so that's pretty cool but yeah there are downsides you know yeah I think we're probably both we're kind of like um it sounds like you are kind of like you were on on like a slump and now you're headed back up in terms of appreciating where you live Yes, I think I'm trying to, again, it's, it's coming from such a privileged position. I'm making the most of what I've got. And I'm realizing that, you know, I have this opportunity to learn Chinese quite cheaply as well. You know, I have all these opportunities to have these nice things. Take that and run with that and don't focus on other things. Because I think it'd be very easy for me to focus on the negatives. Um, I mean, there's some glaring negatives I'll never be able to ignore um but you know I'm trying to just push through and take the little wins where I can and then it's not it's not fun to sit in negativity all the time it's so horrible to sit there (laughs) she's like I know (laughs) I'm feeling it right now (laughs) I know I'm trying my best to get up every morning I you know eat healthy I get out of the house I try to socialize um yeah I was just thinking of some other things that I oh I love like the museum culture and the art culture yeah. here there seems yeah, to be more appreciation for the arts here than at home yeah I think you can go I often have free entry for students don't they so you can go and see stuff much easier I think with historic Scotland and like the National Trust and all that they've looked after a lot more buildings and yeah there's yeah. Been a lot more appreciation for that sort of thing and like even the University of Glasgow I think they put on a lot of art shows they have the art school there which is quite famous yeah so and I as such a history girly mm. there's just yeah actually you know what like being such a history girly it's so nice being somewhere where, where you know the country wasn't founded 248 years ago <laughs> I mean it 248 years ago no um it I can understand that yeah um I mean do you want to speak to your downsides? <laughs> I mean, we said like the, the big thing was like the loneliness. Um, I'm also struggling a bit with like British people, right? Like, and I don't say that as some like, like I hate British people. Um, My God it's, damn it, it's British people. She's not like that. We want no, to preface this. Yeah, like that's not how I feel. It's more so like um, the humor style. Um mm like I think humor is so central to me in my life who I am like I don't know did you agree that like she just sex me all the time I crack myself up like that's how I... she starts pretty much every sentence <laughs> and, and, yeah and Scottish humor isn't like my type of humor yeah um, but actually like interestingly I just signed like a you know a tenancy agreement so I'm moving with a new flatmate in June and Ooh. she's from London and like when we were like meeting she kind of had like that like snarky humor which is what I love Mm. um so that will be fun um and okay so you know how like German people will critique Americans 
for I think they probably critique Americans just because there's so many more of us and like everyone loves to hate like Americans yeah but like it's the an whole easy like target you like yeah but like you know how the whole like we will say like hey how are you but like don't tell us how you are we don't actually care that's just like yeah we say lots of like let's get coffee sometimes and like we don't want to get coffee no, I'll see coffee. you later yeah. like I never want to see you again yeah, yeah, yeah but but it seems like more than again my experience in the U.S. is in the northeast right like let's let's throw that out there like the U.S. is as large as Europe as large as Europe um and so I don't have experience in other parts of the country where things might be like quite different but it seems like Mm. god British people just never say what they mean everything you have to read through the line wait read the lines yeah Yeah, that's a saying right read between the Um, lines read between the lines thank you yeah would you do you think that this is like the case I do think I think there is a subtle you if you know you know and there's like a lot of like yeah there is a lot of to read between the lines I think this is also I mean British racism is is ridiculous I think I saw a comedian uh Nish Kumar he compared it to the British and American office shows so British oh. came first they invented it and the Americans took it made it bigger bolder and had unnecessary celebrity cameos but the British one is more like witty not witty that's about the way to describe racism but more like subtle and mm-hmm. is like just like it's just and it's cut it's I think the comparison was really good but I think like this whole like this is undercurrent of British culture that is very anti everyone, like even Americans, and, like they're, yeah. they're, they're so anti America in the UK. It's so... quite ridiculous, and I think they it's... think it's that Big Brother relationship of like we think we're wiser, we think we're better than you guys. Like but we I'm do, like... we're like. We are. I, li- I know um, British people will literally look at me and talk about how dumb Americans are, and I'm like. You didn't know the difference between the United Kingdom and Great Britain. <laughs> I was listening to a bunch of girls yeah. the other day talking about how they wanted to cite in their paper the UK without Northern Ireland. That's just Great Britain. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it's literally the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. I know. I, I don't, I don't. I think there is this like, un- again, it's this whole pride thing. Like I'm like, you think we're better than people but we're really just as scummy as the rest of us like yeah yeah I do I do get that what you mean I think as soon as you open your mouth I think there's a lot of assumptions because you have an accent the same with me like people just assume yeah. me about me because I have a accent but that's <laughs> life you know and I think, well, I think Americans also do the same thing. It's like, we're better than everywhere else. However, I think that the American, we're better than everywhere else. is like, we're better than everyone. Whereas, like, British people think about certain countries more than others. Do you know what I mean? Yes. They particularly, like, the stereotype is, like, Germans are efficient and drive car, like, nice cars. I've experienced German bureaucracy. They're anything but efficient. Uh, for the train <laughs> well- system? Well, it's better than ours, but still, like, not efficient. Oh, uh, no. And then, and then the bureaucracy, I don't know, the bureaucracy. Um, and then having to fax things. I've never had to fax anything in my life until I got to Germany. Um, but, yeah, and then, like, the French are always striking, and, like, uh, the Danes are rich and drink beer and are tall and blonde. Like, it's this whole thing of, like, there's a lot of stereotypes for countries, good and bad. Like I don't know if this could be a good stereotype, but that whole thing of we people really think America is the South. Like they think it's a cowboy wearing gun twirling, uh, cowboy boot wearing, gay hating, spit shooting person. That's the stereotype of America. It's like so prevalent. In British culture, I think that's the only type of American that they can see. Like you said, America is as big as Europe. You have all walks of life from America. Well, and it's quite interesting being like, I think, from the country where like we're on everyone's news in a way that like yeah. and so you go to all these people places and you meet these people who somehow think that they know more about America than you do. And yeah. it's hard to convey that's like yes like Americans were all lied to and like our education 
education and stuff like that but so are you and like so yeah. is everyone um yeah chances I mean, we are all you deeply concerned don't, but you don't know more about america than i do yeah like yeah your politics we're all so concerned about the president presidential elections who else has this much concern about a presidential election no other country's like presidential election invokes fear into the rest of the world yeah not at the scale america's does yeah well and we we discussed this sort of like the thing is is i don't know i, I like because i'm like a foreigner here i'm able to make this judgment whereas like i wouldn't be able to make this judgment about home because i wouldn't be a foreigner but mm -hmm. we were talking about this there seems to be this like real tribalism here that's oh, like yeah. Well, not, the UK is like very anti-immigration more than I realized. Um, like very anti-immigration is actually insane. Um, um, but this also like just distrust for anybody that isn't white and we'll say Scottish just because I'm in Scotland. Ethnic, ethnically Celtic or Pictish, like that's how yeah. you maybe like a Gaelic or yeah, this certain ethnicity because it's not the hate the hate white eastern europeans that used that used to be the enemy yeah but but it's oh. also just like it's not just like this racism like it's like a distrust yes yeah i i do think i mean it is ironic we invaded and immigrated into the entire rest of the world but then when people come back and do it to us we're like excuse me um but yeah there is this real like like i think i texted you the day yeah it's tribalism that's emerging because I think because the country is experiencing so many problems what you fall upon the old adage of it's someone else's problem I'm not mm -hmm. the problem it's not my my country siphoning off money for the, the cronies it's people fleeing war and coming here to not be killed but their fault yeah you know <laughs> but so this is just to say that's like this is some of the things that I've struggled with with here that I didn't expect to struggle with which yeah. um like that's just kind of you know maybe the downside of like living in another country in general like there are yeah. all are, are all the upsides like I'm getting a perspective on the world that most people will never get but I'm yeah. also like having to be distrusted everywhere I go yeah uh, um yeah yeah I I mean again privileged as like white female you know this whole thing when you walk down the street you can blend mm -hmm. um so it's a privilege to be able to go to these countries but yeah there is some drawbacks and it's perfectly acceptable to talk about the drawbacks now as someone who does not blend when they walk down the street yeah uh, i want to hear about and also somewhere we'll talk about that and also talk about like a place do you do you think that people that it's like prevalent in culture that china is the rising hegemon right like the UK and China on on like mirror each other or I don't know you know what it's, I'm saying it's weird because of course okay the first caveat is look I don't speak the local language well enough to be able to communicate with locals about their perspectives on the rise of course it's a communist country so well, it's not communist country it's, it's authoritarian country so news and information is very hard to come by so people can't really form opinions okay uh so that does caveat things uh, and it's a very ethnically homogenous country, as in there's many different Chinese ethnicities, but, you know, we can kind of call it, you know, Chinese homogeneity, and then there's sub-ethnicities. I don't think that's the correct anthropological terms, but that's what I'm using, because I'm not an anthropologist. Um, but, like, it is this thing of, I walk down the street, I can be photographed, I can have people stare at me, like the IE, IE is like the word for auntie. But it means like not just your auntie but like a helper a domestic servant and all that they just like stare at you I mean the old men too like I'm on my e-bike and I think the police officer stopped doing his job to see me because he's like ah, I go run on that e you're on an e-bike yeah like it was that typical that thing and you know on the subway I wear a mask usually because people are gross um uh, that's no matter where you are but like if I can, if someone catches my eye, I can see them go, oh my God, a foreigner on the subway. And I'm like, yes, we use it too. Uh, but it is interesting. Actually, there's an economic slump here. Uh, the, there's been a cross-party conference recently by the CCP and they're actually meeting to see what they can do about it. 
they're sticking to their five-year plans. Um, but a lot of people are lying flat, not wanting to do anything. Because uh, I feel like kind of the economic promise has been broken. This whole thing of, I work hard, I'll be able to have a house, you know, a wife, you know, kids, you know, a nice life. And that's kind of been broken a bit. Um, and it's just this whole thing of, I can't see it. Because again, I think I live in a very rich city and I live in a very rich area. And I work for rich people. You know, my school is not a cheap school. So it's yeah. given me quite a narrow perspective on things. Uh, when the kids come in wearing Burberry. Uh, but I will say, like, some people are incredibly nice. Again, as a, and this is the thing. In China, there's good foreigners and there's bad foreigners. I'm a good foreigner, according to Chinese people, because of my skin color. And because I'm a woman. Uh, okay. I think this, and I'm a British person. Like, I think the highest ranking, like, foreigners here are the British and Americans. Mm-hmm and for education anyway and like as a woman you're more sought after as well for teaching because there's more men teaching at the moment um than women I think like my team there's six men and there's three girls and before that was just me and eight men so that kind of shows you the the dynamics but there's more foreign so it's more local Chinese teachers who are women um but I think that's really influenced things but for me, it's more the loneliness, and it's actually the foreigners, the fellow foreigners that give me sometimes jip than uh, the Chinese people. I mean, sometimes it's frustrating when you're trying to get off the subway and no one lets you off. I'm like, I have to get off for you to get on. What logic is this? I have to get off this elevator for you to get on. Let's just let me off the elevator on the spitting. Chinese people spit on the ground, like they like suck up everything in the back of their throat and spit. I saw it in the elevator the other day, and the smoking. I could do without the smoking. Because people smoke a lot, and they're really strong-smelling cigarettes. But those, like, nip- oh, and the pollution. And the pollution. The pollution is really, really bad, guys. I had to get an air purifier. Uh, but I think it's the loneliness and the other foreigners. Like, the my building, there's probably a few foreigners. And whenever I see them, like, give a foreigner nod. It's like, oh, foreigner. They ignore you. I think it's because foreign foreigners get oh. here and they think they're better than you. I'm like, we all work the same job. We're all teachers. Like, just admit it. We're all teachers. Like, I literally said to the immigration guy, I'm a teacher. I was like, I'm like the basic foreigner. I have the starter pack. I'm just a teacher. You know, so my biggest thing is the loneliness. Like, a uh, colleague summed this up quite nicely. He said that, People often move on from job to job or they just can't crack China or they move city. And even though contact, staying in contact is so easy, people come and go out of your life so people never make effort to truly connect with you. And that's kind of the vibe I've got here. And I also, you know, I'm 24. We're both 24. I thought everybody, everybody else would be like 21 to 27. I'm the youngest by six. No, I'm the youngest by three years now. Like, Everyone is, you know, in their thirties, forties. Maybe that's just in my school, but that was a big, you know, a shift. And I think it's different when someone has kids who's been here five, six years, and I come here and I want to do stuff. They're like, "Oh, I'm bored of it. I've been here for five years. I've been here for twenty years. I don't want to do anything." So I think that's a big adjustment for me, and like the loneliness as well. I mean, I threw myself into work, so that did help, but. I can see why people just feel very isolated here because it's trying to find places where, if you don't speak Chinese, it's finding places where foreigners gather. I think bars, and that's why I think a lot of foreigners here have problems with alcohol. Interesting. See, what you said about like the older people and families and stuff like that. Well, I mean, I will also say loneliness is my biggest issue. Um, Obviously we've discussed this. Um, and for me it's like a bit different it's not the foreigners ignoring me but it's because like most people have their lives set up here right like yeah like they don't need they're not like actively searching out new friends in the way that I am you know when you have your close group you have your close group um and it's not like insulting but like 
it's kind of like, you know, I want to be friends with people. Um, but the other thing is that like, right, like I am, I am almost 25 and we're getting to a point where a lot of people are like, um, getting into relationships, serious relationships, like getting ready to settle down within the next few years where like your partner is your main person. And I think that like in the past, because of the nature of our master's program and also just being younger, so many people were single. And so I had all these people to um, hang out with all the time. Yeah. Yeah. But now it's like, there's like couples dinners and like, like double dates and stuff like that. Um, Or like, you know, I have some like decent friends here. I want to say decent. I don't mean, I mean, they're good people. I just mean like, we're not like the closest ever um where like they invite me out with them but it's like them and both their partners and like I I am like super grateful to be invited out and I like all of them but like it sucks to be a fifth wheel of people who like are married and like long-term partners live together and this is the first time for me where like of course like I was like oh I want to be in a relationship in the past just because like it would be nice but also in the past I wasn't missing out on anything being not being in a relationship like I was having like pretty much all of my needs fulfilled through my friends whereas Mm -hmm. now I'm like oh a relationship would actually benefit like my quality of life definitely definitely I think this is a symptom of living studying abroad and moving every one or two years like for me after China probably gonna do a PhD in another country hopefully fingers crossed I'm eyeing up all these PhDs but I probably will not find a partner in the PhD so that's what another four years so if I stay here for three years I don't know four years on that's seven years you want to stay there for three years I thought you wanted to stay there for two Um, to be discussed later to be discussed TBD um so I don't like I'm just like that's 30 something and like life is never too late to start or do anything um but I mean I don't think I'm gonna be Olympian in my 30s but it's a whole thing of like it does kind of suck when you're like constantly having to leave friends behind and move on to the next thing and like you never have a permanent base as well like always packing up your life like every few years having to sell everything and buy new again like nothing is yours permanently almost except maybe your clothes um when you compare that to other people I mean you don't know what life's got in in store for you I could walk into my partner tomorrow and be like oh my god and I'll be stuck in China actually I'm gonna make the move um (laughs) out you know to another country but I don't I don't know and I think right now my perspective I I do understand what you mean like it sucks when like I go to work and everyone has a partner like a husband a wife and I'm the only single one at work like I literally sit like on our nights out because everyone's partners come along and I'm just like yeah yeah and the baby I, I don't think I know a single like literally all of the people that I all the girls that I've spoken to in my in my program Every single one has referenced a boyfriend that that I've like spoken to, right? Like maybe some of them, I haven't realized that they haven't referenced a boyfriend. Like, mm. you know, maybe I pay attention to like all the people do. But I mean, like, I feel like every single person has referenced a boyfriend. And I'm like, who am I supposed to go out on like a girl's night and like, like get free drinks yeah. from people? Like that sort of thing. Yeah, it's just a different mindset because they always have to consider someone else. So it has been an adjustment in that sense and yeah the loneliness was hard I think because the age gap like my colleagues the age gap was there they also all been here for you know at least five years was the like the youngest one of being here so it's that thing of like they're like I've been there done that and I'm like oh I haven't yeah I haven't I have no friends so how am I supposed to do this um so but I think I'm trying to make more effort this term and like just push through a bit more but yeah we shall see what the world has in store yeah the weather I'm actually now a cold lizard like it was 18 degrees today and I wore I have a layer underneath this 18 jumper and jack- it was 18 and jacket. degrees yeah I'm wearing this is what I wore and a puffer jacket 
And then yesterday it was like 15 and I wore a full set of thermals. What is happening? We, what I is would happening? Never. People, people here would be wearing shorts in 18 so, degree weather. Someone was wearing shorts today out of my colleagues, but it's just that whole thing. Like I've become a lizard. Like I need the sun and the heat. I, I mean, it's going to get really hot soon and I'm going to die. So you'll hear me complaining about it in another episode, but yeah. The weather has been wild to adjust to. Um, it was so hot when I got here. It was disgustingly hot. But now I'm like, ooh, it's a warm would be nice. Yeah. So, yeah. I think that is all to say. Yeah. That we, I mean, I'm appreciative of where I live and getting this experience, but. Oh, yeah. I have so many and again maybe in July will change like it's it's March yeah. it's been gray out for days um but I have all these what ifs because I mean the grass is always greener but I see these oh, people yeah. who are dating their high school sweethearts and they bought a house and they have a dog maybe a labradoodle I don't want a doodle and I'm like that seems you seem like content that seems like a really that seems yeah like a good choice yeah at 25 my parents had met and married my parents had it my parents no my parents didn't get married until they were like 28 or 29 yeah oh and but, actually no what else the other thing that like is super stressful is the visa situation which you'll have to think about if you ever move abroad people it's like yeah. way more stressful than you realize oh girl okay the other thing so i'm trying to transfer money out of my paycheck to go to my british accounts because i shouldn't want to pay and can I just say, to transfer money out of this country, I need my visa, I need my passport, I need all my tax documents, like proving I pay tax, I need all my pay slips, I need my contract for my school saying I've been here, I need a housing contract to prove I live here, I need my bank card, I need my banking details on both sides, but I need the home address of my bank there, and it's going to take two hours, and I have to fill out a thousand and four forms. I haven't done it yet and I'm dreading it. Like, I'm mentally preparing for it. Like, it is that whole thing of there is so much bureaucracy here and there's so many barriers to just little things. You're just like, I get it. I'm a foreigner in a foreign country. I have to learn that the world is not set up for me. I'm just like, there's so many unnecessary barriers, Um, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so something to consider if, if you want to study abroad live abroad i mean again privileged you know white people we're complaining about loneliness um I know. But there is a loneliness epidemic going on right now so it's something really to consider and just because we post really cute photos on insta doesn't mean we're actually happy we're dead inside i know that's <laughs> one of those things like i know i was talking to hannah about like oh my life probably seems like a jet center but like i have an internship i have a job i have a number of extracurriculars on top of being a full-time law student like most of my time is me think thinking like this is so unfun this is so unfun this is so unfun so yeah, yeah. best times of our lives allegedly no I, I think the third I think my 30s will be will be it for me hopefully we have to hope we can only go up from here so yeah we're gonna end it on this um because we realised that some of our episodes have been going a bit long, so try and keep them a bit shorter for you guys. Yeah. Um, please uh, let us know if you want to us to discuss any topics. We love uh, audience input. If we ever get any, it's not scams or hate. Um, <laughs> remember, the hate goes to the Gmail. And uh, yes, you can find us on all our socials. Kylie, you know them better than I do. <laughs> yeah, our Instagram is she has a point pod. I think our TikTok is she's a point podcast, as well as our YouTube. Regardless, it will all be linked. It will be linked. In our Instagram, of course, is the best place to find us. But you can, you know, listen to us on Spotify, and the links are on Spotify. Yes, we know the Spotify is sometimes easier, so that people can turn the phone off and play us while they run. Uh, <laughs> but yes, thank you so much for listening. Um, I hope everyone is having a lovely time in this March. It's just Ramadan has just started. So I hope everyone's having a lovely Ramadan. Yeah, Ramadan and... Bark. Yes. Ramadan Kareem as well. So uh, yes, have a lovely time and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.